an ancient African skull may rewrite our species' origins, and other ancient hominin skulls from Eurasia suggest that Homo sapiens did not evolve solely from African ancestors. The Dali skull, which combines a thick and massive cranial vault with a short and markedly flattened face, has been assigned to Homo erectus and even archaic Homo sapiens by various paleoanthropologists. In Europe, the Steinheim skull has long been a source of consternation in paleoanthropology, because the cranium has an unusual mix of modern and archaic characteristics. Meanwhile, in Africa, the Smithsonian Institution's exhibit item number, ES11693, is a dark, magnesium-stained fossil skull of very early human ancestry from Elia Springs, dating between 200,000 and 300,000 years old. The fossil cranium from Elia Springs on the western shore of Lake Turkana, was presented as a representative of archaic Homo sapiens in a preliminary report. Despite dating issues, the well-preserved and heavily mineralized fossil exhibits many morphological features that can be attributed to archaic Homo sapiens, according to the report. The skull was the first skull in the archaic Homo sapiens taxon, which dates back between 100,000 and 300,000 years. It is thought to be between 200,000 and 300,000 years old and belongs to the Pleistocene epoch. Nonetheless, because the dating was based on its morphology, which varies greatly in Africa, the skull could be much younger, possibly as young as 100,000 years. The dating has been revised several times, with authors and techniques offering values such as 300,000 years or the interval 200,000 to 300,000 years. The discrepancies stem, among other things, from being a finding on the surface that is out of context, and whose state suggests erosion caused by the action of the lake's waves. Elia Springs is compared favorably to early and late archaic Homo sapiens in Africa. Although the hominid has a unique mosaic of archaic and modern features, it appears to be more closely related to the late archaic Homo sapiens grade. These specimens are thought to be among the earliest Homo sapiens discovered in the Garden of Eden. Nevertheless, its morphology precludes a direct link to Homo sapiens or anatomically modern humans. But the wide diversity of hominids at this time of evolution complicates attribution, as it does in other fossils. The skull is larger, wider, lower, and more vertical than other similar skulls, indicating that it probably evolved into modern humans. The cranial capacity is estimated to be between 1350 and 1400 cc. The Litoli hominin 18, or LH18, is a fossilized early Homo sapiens skull discovered in Litoli, Tanzania, with an estimated age of 120,000 to 200,000 years. This discovery significantly delayed the appearance of modern Homo sapiens, altering evolutionary theory. The endocranial capacity is approximately 1,200 cubic centimeters. The morphology of the skull shows sapiens characteristics, but they are mixed with other archaic ones, such as the prominence of the brow ridge. The Elia spring skull's unique morphology is also reminiscent of a skull from East Asia, half a world away. Both skulls have a contemporary appearance, with a long but rounded brain case. Most scientists believe that all Homo sapiens are descended solely from African ancestors. However, a new analysis of an ancient skull from Asia found too many similarities to archaic Homo sapiens fossils discovered in Africa, to be a coincidence. The Dali cranium was originally believed it belonged to Homo erectus, an early hominin species. Despite being dated to around 260,000 years ago, its facial structure and brain case are still intact. In fact, the Dali skull is so old that archaeologists initially doubted it could share any characteristics with modern Homo sapiens. The Dali cranium is of interest to anthropologists because it may be a well-preserved example of archaic Homo sapiens, with traits from both Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. The details of the face and skull, though, distinguish it from European Neanderthals and earlier European hominids, such as those discovered in Petrolona in Greece and Steinheim in Germany. The skull is low and long, with a rounded posterior end, unlike the contemporary broad-based Homo erectus or top-wide skull of modern humans. It does, in fact, have a prominent sagittal keel, a feature shared by Homo erectus but only a few modern humans. The brain appears to have been primarily located behind the face, resulting in an extremely low forehead, as in the Elia Springs cranium. 
the cranial capacity is estimated to be around 1,120 cubic centimeters, which places it at the lower end of the modern human range and at the upper end of the Homo erectus range. Later scientists produced a much more detailed description of the specimen, concluding that it is a transitional morph between Homo erectus and modern humans. Since then, the out-of-Africa hypothesis, that humans evolved in and dispersed from Africa, has overturned the out-of-Asia and multi-regional hypotheses. Peking man and Java man were then considered to be dead offshoots in Western thought, after the emergence of the out-of-Africa theory. However, due to their striking physical similarities, Homo erectus and Homo sapiens must have shared DNA. Scientists recently reanalyzed the Dali skull and discovered it may force us to rewrite our evolutionary history after all, despite decades of dismissal by mainstream academia. It's strikingly similar to two separate Homo sapiens skulls discovered in Africa. That discovery was unexpected by scientists. If we had only discovered Africa skulls and not the Dali skull, it would be reasonable to believe that all modern humans evolved in Africa. But the similarities suggest that early modern humans were not genetically isolated from other parts of the world, such as what we now call China. Indeed, based on the, the discovery of human remains from the Near East, which feature a mix of Neanderthal and Homo erectus traits, some researchers believe the apparent diversity of supposedly unique human forms during the Middle Pleistocene was the result of a complex network of cross-continental interbreeding. Thus, some archaic humans could have been a mix of Neanderthal relatives and an already widespread Asian erectus population. For example, despite its enormous dimensions, the face of the Harbin cranium from China is relatively low in height and has a Homo sapiens, an Homo antisessa-like zygomaxillary shape, which is also found in fossil from Dali. It is also hafted onto the brain case with decreased prognathism, as seen in recent humans. The Harbin cranium more closely resembles fossils attributed to early Homo sapiens, such as Jebel Erhoud and Alia Springs, than later members of our lineage. As previously stated, the Steinheim skull has also long been a source of consternation in paleoanthropology. The cranium has the most unusual mix of hominin characteristics in the European Middle Pleistocene. Several human lineages, evidently at the species level, coexisted with Homo sapiens across Africa and Eurasia during the late Middle and late Pleistocene. In fact, a few paleoanthropologists wonder whether the Steinheim skull of Germany may be a Neanderthal's Homo sapiens hybrid, or an archaic Homo sapiens. We now know that early Neanderthals were influenced by genetic exchanges with Africa, and hominin fossils from Apodyma Greece, which is close in age to Steinheim, may reflect this mixing. The Steinheim specimen, discovered alongside elephant and rhinoceros bones, has been dated to between 250,000 and 350,000 years. This period overlaps with the exchange of genetic materials between Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, as well as a period of warmer climate when archaic humans were on the move. The skull has a long, slightly flattened shape, moderately heavy brow ridges, and a rounded back portion. Steinheim is usually classified as an archaic Homo sapiens or as Homo heidelbergensis, because it does not deviate from the normal range of variation for these traits in these species. Steinheim retains some primitive characteristics that are intermediate between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, such as heavy brow ridges and a small cranial capacity of 1,100 cubic centimeters. According to some archaeologists the spherical brain case is similar in shape to that of Homo sapiens. In another study, researchers compared 600 different morphological features of the skull, across 95 different human skulls and mandibles. They applied a set of mathematical techniques to all of this data, to generate branching diagrams that depict the phylogenetic relationships of the various hominin species. According to the findings, there were three main lineages of later Pleistocene humans, each descended from a common ancestor, Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis and a group that have proven difficult to classify the findings suggest that the Steinheim cranium belongs to the same group the European Homo antecessor partial cranium, the African Elia Springs cranium, and the Rabat partial cranium from Morocco. According to scientists, gene flow could have been bidirectional, so some of the traits seen in Europe or Africa could have originated in Asia. According to supporters of this theory, we are talking about a multi-regional population that is linked recurrently by migration and genetic exchanges. In fact, 
certain characteristics associated with modern Homo sapiens may have evolved in Eurasia and were only later carried to Africa. More comparisons between the Dali skull and the African ones are required. But the implications are massive. We're talking about rewriting the origins of our species as we know it, rethinking how our forefathers migrated, interacted, and evolved. Thank you.